ஹாய் வெல்கம் டு அவர் பாமா டாபிக்ஸ் சேனல் வெல்கம் டு தி தேர்ட்டி சிக்ஸ்த் சீரீஸ் ஆஃப் ப்ரின்சிபல்ஸ் ஆஃப் ட்ரக் டிஸ்கவரி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் குவான்டிடேட்டிவ் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆக்டிவிட்டி ரிலேஷன்ஷிப் இட் இஸ் பார்ட் ஏ இட் ஹேஸ் டூ பார்ட்ஸ் ஸோ வி வில் பி ஹேவிங் தி பார்ட் பி ஆல்சோ செப்பரேட்லி ஸோ லெட் அஸ் சி வாட் இஸ் எஸ்ஏஆர் அண்ட் கியூஎஸ்ஏஆர் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் எஸ்ஏஆர் இஸ் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆக்டிவிட்டி ரிலேஷன்ஷிப் அண்ட் மெனி குவான்டிஃபை இட் இட் இஸ் கால்டு குவான்டிடேட்டிவ் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆக்டிவிட்டி ரிலேஷன்ஷிப் molecular structure and biological activity are correlated by observing the results of systematic structural modification on a defined biological end points is called sar uh, whereas qsar it is a mathematical relationship between the biological activity of a molecular system and its geometric and chemical characteristics qsar is basically a subset of uh, the sar uh, sar uses x rays and nmr techniques whereas a qsar uses computational techniques sar is qualitative and not quantitative whereas qsar is quantitative uh, sar uh, is the relationship between chemical or 3d uh, structure of a molecule and its biological activity whereas qsar has many subdivisions 1d qsar 2d 3d 4d qsar 5d qsar 6d descriptors and even 7d is also available in the qsar Identif- uh, SAR identifies uh, which functional groups are important for binding or activity. It consists of analog based drug design. Whereas uh, QSAR includes uh, Hammett constant, Hansch analysis, COMFA, COMSIA. Uh, there are many techniques which are involved in the QSAR. Uh, statistical methods are less uh, in case of a SAR when compared to QSAR. The QSAR includes a partial least square analysis that is PLS. multiple linear regression uh, mlr and uh, many statistical methods are involved in the qsar so qsar uh, quantitative structure activity relationship is a method to correlate the biological activity with the physico chemical properties of a compound it is the ligand based drug design method developed uh, for more than 50 years uh, by hans and fujita it was modified in 1964 the biological activity equal to function of physical physico chemical properties is the basic equation of qsar it finds out the correlation between the chemical structure and the biological activity like uh, micro mole uh, the concentration ic50 ec50 uh, ki km <coughs> etc are the categorical binary uh, things like active inactive toxic non toxic like that so the basically the qsar uh, technique involves uh, it is a schematic uh, representation you give the in vitro data you use the in silico work and uh, you give a set of compounds and you predict the activity this is the basic of uh, qsar and you if you change the functional groups what happens to the activity and you quantify it that is called qsar the advantages of qsar it is a very valuable tool for rational uh, drug design it provides an idea of substituents to understand uh, are used in developing biologically active uh, series it provides an idea about the activity before its validation uh, in in vitro and in vivo studies it provides optimal use of resources to achieve a proper uh, drug design and reduces the time for drug discovery it is the it is only a prediction of substituent effect or on the non covalent intermolecular interactions the values provided by different software uh, may vary and mislead our interpretation this is one of the limitations of qsar if non linear relationship is observed uh, between the dependent and independent variables qsar has no explanation the synthesized leads completely depend on the, on the algorithms employed during software development let us see the history of uh, qsar the concept of uh, qsar dates back to 19th century Uh, Crum uh, Brown and uh, Fraser uh, in the early 18, 1868 uh, described the first formula uh, this is the, that is a biological activity is a function of the chemical uh, characteristics of a, a molecule mayer and overton independently found re- linear relationships between lipophilicity and uh, biological effect ferguson described the cut off uh, of uh, biological activities uh, beyond a certain limit of uh, lipophilicity in early 60s uh, 1960 uh, hans and free wilson analysis were developed zarnik 
uh, first applied the concept of Hammett equation. In 80s, 3D QSR was developed and in 90s, uh, grid, comb and comb CR were developed. Comparative molecular field analysis, uh, comparative molecular uh, similarity indices were developed. Now let us see what is a molecular descriptor. Molecular descriptors uh, can be defined as uh, mathematical representations of molecules properties that are gener generated by algorithms. The numerical values of molecular descriptors are used, in qu used uh, qu to quantitatively describe the physical and chemical information of the molecules. An example of molecular descriptors is log P, which is a quantitative representation of uh, the lipophilicity of the molecules. It is obtained uh, by measuring the partitioning of the molecule between an aqueous phase and a lipophilic phase, which consists usually of uh, water and N octanol. Let us see what are these 1D, 2D, 3D molecular descriptors. The 1D descriptors are the simplest uh, type of uh, molecular descriptors. These represent the information that are calculated from molecular formula of the, of the compound, which includes the count and type of atoms in the molecule and the molecular weight. Then 2D descriptors are more complex than the 1D descriptors. Usually they represent the molecular uh, information regarding the size, shape and electronic distribution of the uh, molecule. The 3D descriptors uh, describe mainly properties that are related to the 3D conformation of the molecule, <coughs> such as uh, intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Ex <coughs> examples of uh, descriptors obtained from calculations involving the 3D structure uh, of the molecules are the polar and non-polar surface area, that is PSA and NPSA respectively. Let us see the molecular descriptors in brief. Uh, so this is the representation uh, for the different uh, geometry of the molecule. One is 0D, 1D, 2D, 3D and 4D. So 0D QSR it represents the molecular formula. 1D QSR it is a fingerprint of uh, molecular weight, molecular refractivity, log P. 2D QSR it gives the geometrical descriptors like a shape, electronic distribution, number of atoms, number of bonds, connectivity indices and so on. 3D QSR it's uh, topological, it gives the Van der Waals uh, volume, solvent accessible uh, uh, surface area. Then 4D QSR is grid based, it's a combination of atoms and coordinates. 5D QSR it is an ensemble of uh, different induced models. 6D QSR is related to entropy dimensions so it is a it's an outline hydrophobic parameters uh, descriptors are partition coefficient pi substituent solubility and chromatographic parameter whereas uh, the electronic uh, parameters uh, which are molecular descriptors are hammett constant resonance effect field effect uh, inductive substituent constant then uh, steric parameters like uh, taps steric substituent constant van der waals radii molar refractivity, Verloop steric parameter, then quantum mechanic uh, parameter descriptors are atomic charge densities, atomic uh, net charge, super uh, delocalizability and E homo and uh, E lumo. It is the energy level of the molecular orbitals. Then partition coefficient uh, molecular descriptors are Hans, uh, fragmentation constant, chromatographic RM value. Biological relationships are represented by Hans analysis, Ferguson effect, and Free Wilson analysis. Uh, let us see the software for calculation of molecular descriptors. One is uh, ChemDesk, and next is uh, Paddle Descriptor, and the new one is uh, AlvaDesk, uh, which is uh, for academic uh, use. All these things are uh, free, but Al I hope AlvaDesk you can apply to them, uh, uh, get the license from them for academic use. Let us see the electronic parameters, uh, Hammett's constant. So uh, let us take a molecule. Uh, the formula is a log K by K0 delta P. Uh, K is the equilibrium constant for uh, a given equilibrium reaction with substituent R. K0 is the reference constant with R equal to H. Substituent constant with specific uh, substituent rho uh, is sigma. And the reaction constant is psi. Uh, depends only on the type of reaction but not on the substituent used. So when the substituent uh, changes uh, at the ortho level or uh, that is at the para level or meta level, you can see the constant uh, changes. 
so this uh, when the this is taken as a descriptor the, which is a hammer's constant then taps the substituent constant it is used to measure the polar effects of substituents in aliphatic compounds when the group does not uh, form a part of a conjugated system so the formula is uh, this psi equal to 1 by 2.48 log k by k0 b minus log k by k0 a so the sigma star is the taps substituent constant k is the rate constant for hydrolysis of substituent uh, substituted compound k0 a rate constant for hydrolysis of methyl derivative a is acid hydrolysis and b is base hydrolysis then craig plot it uh, gives a compilation of uh, what functional groups could be selected based on the sigma and pi factors if you see this plot if you need uh, a substituent uh, with uh, plus sigma and minus uh, pi you can use these groups for substitution so here you can check it so the x axis is uh, sigma and the y axis is uh, pi it's like a four quadrant so wherever you need uh, based on these uh, parameters you can use the substitutions hans analysis hans suggested uh, linear and non linear dependence of uh, the biological activity on different parameters um, it is a, a formula for hans analysis log 1 by c equal to a log p plus uh, the second parameter then the third parameter like uh, taps steric constant and d and so on then uh, this is for linear uh, uh, set of molecules for a non linear uh, data set uh, the formula varies a log p uh, square uh, into 2 uh, b log p uh, c sigma d e s and so on a to e are constants uh, determined for a particular biological activity by multiple regression analysis log p sigma e s are the independent variables uh, whose values are obtained directly from the experiments the accuracy of a hans equation will depend on the number of analogs used that is n greater the number the higher the probability of obtaining an accurate hans equation the choice of the parameter that is which uh, thing uh, functional group could be used uh, you can use the craig plot the accuracy of hans equation may be assessed from the values of standard deviation s yes, and the regression constant r uh, s yes should be smaller and r should be near 0.9 so example for this say if you see this uh, this is an anti adrenergic compound if you put this formula n is number of compounds uh, s is the standard deviation r is the correlation uh, coefficient or regression uh, you can see that r is uh, 0.9 and s is less this is for antibiotic the hans equation for number of compounds taken are 20 and this is a monoamine inhibitor Uh, they have taken uh, nine uh, compounds and uh, it, this is one of the compound which uh, crosses the blood brain barrier after 15 minutes and this is the equation which gives the hans analysis constants free wilson analysis it incorporates the contribution made by various uh, structural fragments to overall biological activity indicator variables are used uh, to denote uh, the presence or absence of particular structural feature <coughs> it is represented by the equation uh, ba equal to sigma ai xi uh, plus mu ba is the biological activity mu is the overall activity ai is the contribution of the each structural feature xi denotes the presence that is xi equal to 1 or the absence xi equal to 0 of a particular structural fragment this approach was easy to apply but had drawbacks mostly centered on large number of parameters and substituent loss of the statistical degree of freedom so there was a mixed approach called uh, proposed by uh, kubini uh, relationship between the hans and free wilson analysis so kubini has uh, presented the combination of hans and free wilson approach called mixed approach so we know uh, log ba equal to um, k1 pi k2 sigma like that it comes in hans analysis in case of uh, the free wilson approach mu equal to uh, sigma ai aj this is a free wilson approach the mixed approach can be written as like this log ba equal to these two equations are clubbed where sigma ai aj is the free wilson part of the substituents 
and sigma pi es are the contribution of the parent skeleton that is from the hands analysis so this approach has several advantages still uh, this model is uh, used for qsar so let us see the qsar methodology uh, first is uh, data processing then the data has to be transformed uh, where uh, smoothing normalization and aggregation has to be taken care then the data set has to be prepared there should be a training set and there should be a test set then a feature or descriptors has to be selected based on the filter wrapper or heuristic methods then model development which is a regression based classification based or machine learning techniques could be used then you have to validate the models by internal validation and external validation then you can interpret and analyze the data let us see the qsr methods there are uh, one is a regression method the subdivision is uh, multiple linear regression methods and partial least uh, square regression method uh, there is another method called classification method uh, that is called a cluster analysis uh, then a principal component analysis linear discriminant analysis machine learning techniques like uh, artificial neural network super uh, support uh, vector machine and gene expression programming are the qsar methods which are followed the selection of the training set and the uh, in the qsar methods it is most important the selection of the training set is very important in qsar analysis the ratio distribution of uh, the grouping into training and test set are training set uh, should be should include two third of the total data uh, test set, uh, set uh, should include one third of the total data selection can also be done based on the physicochemical descriptors and the structural uh, similarity automated uh, random selection can also be made uh, choosing the components in training and uh, test set uh, should be made uh, so it is an outline of uh, the basic uh, uh, features uh, which are presented in the qsar i hope it will be useful for you thank you for listening happy learning kindly share this to more of your friends if you like this video kindly press the like button um, kindly go through the next part also where we will be discussing the 3d qsar comfa uh, comsia which are also very important from the exam point of view thank you